I'm Doug Coyle. I'm here with Tim Brown. Tim has uh, uh, taken a lead with the Young Glory uh, Academy program mm -hmm. and uh, with youth uh, development for Old Glory. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about the program? Sure. Well, Young Glory, there's a couple MLR teams doing what we're doing. We're actually a nonprofit, 501c3. So we do community uh, academy and then all the way up through uh, 23 and under. So this fall, we should be built out to about nine different academy sides representing men and women, boys and girls. Um, it's been really successful. We've got Arminta here doing full-time social media with us. And then we have Ben Sima in the field um, working as a rugby development officer. And then we're in the process of hiring another RDO as well to work um, kind of our southern territory. So it's um, it's gone from being something that we dreamed about and uh it, you know had to fund which we we operate all on uh sponsor donors like a kid can play for free if if he needs assistance to um now having we'll have four people in the field full time uh by this august so it's exciting times um you know kind of you i wish we had been able to start 20 years ago and i think the u.s would be in a different place if there was 12 mlr teams running um, academy like ourselves and some of the other ones are doing but it's an exciting time uh, to be out in the field and to see I see kids now year to year because I'm in my fifth year so I see kids year to year improving um, immensely you can probably hear the excitement of the game in back of us which is uh, has quite a few of our U23 Academy players as well as guys that were in the U18 Academy before that so uh, are um, there still players from uh, Mary Washington that you coached? Uh, yeah, yeah, so some of these guys, well, in, in I'll, I'll use Jose Reyes as an example. Um, I've known him since he was in eighth grade. Uh, saw him grow up through high school rugby that we were active helping with um, the Virginia High School All-Stars. Then he came to uh, Mary Washington and won a D1AA championship with us. Then he was active in D1A, helping build the team up. Then he was active in uh, Old Glory or Young Glory U23s. And last week he signed a contract. So that's a nice progression to see from a kid that you saw everywhere. Um, that's not him. <laughs> no, but that's, a, that's another one of our local products. Um, <laughs> John. <laughs> John, how you doing? Good. Doug so, nice John, you. John's a great example. He was at Old Dominion, so I coached against him when he was in college. Hated him in school because he was good. Um, but um, now we're on the same team, and he came up through our U23s like he was playing in these games last year. So, like, John's a perfect example. He would have played against Jose at every step. Um, we have Alex Baladeros, who was at Queens. Jose, who was at Mary Washington. Um the Mount here, so we've got Mount with a whole bunch of kids. So between Mount and Mary Washington, we probably have both excellent programs, both of them really young. We probably have 12 to 15 kids that are active in our academy right now. John, how did uh, playing with Young Glory help your rugby development? Um, I think it's just always good to play against the local talent, really. I mean, we got a lot of talent in the DMV. I think it doesn't always get recognized, so I think um, just playing with them and against them all the time can only get better. Yeah. You you also had a unique experience going to Scotland uh, uh, to develop your talent. Actually, I actually did not go to Scotland. I went to Chula Vista and played uh, sevens this oh, past sorry. summer. Well, I got invited to go, but I decided to go do sevens with the USA instead. Um, just a personal decision. Wanted to play some sevens. So, like, o Owen Sheehy went to yeah. Scotland, and, um, you know, that was better better training than he could have got domestically um, at that time, you know, that period of the year. Um, a lot of people forget, like, he'd still be a college senior or a college fifth-year senior, and he's out here in his second or third season with us. So um, I, I think the key to what we're doing is flexibility. Like, the model that might work for varsity rugby at Mount is entirely different than the model that works at UMW and the model that's at Navy. There, you could not have three more different places but they're all getting more reps for kids. They're playing a lot of 15s, and they're developing people in their own way. Speaking of uh, playing for the U.S., 
you also played for the Falcons. Yes. Can you uh, share a little bit about that experience? Oh, that was a great experience. I mean, uh, anytime you get an opportunity to go to another country to play, you know, the sport you love, it's, it's awesome. So just getting around, you know, all those boys who have kind of been in that system um, and then getting the opportunity, like I said, to go to a different country, it was, it was great. Um, given, you know, I'd, I'd do it again for sure. Thank you very much. Yeah, no worries. Tim, one last question. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been uh, uh, a kind of a talent advisor for the club when it comes to the collegiate draft. Can you uh, talk about uh, your input with that? Sure. And I'll, I'll say, um, you know, we want to be judged by our results. When we started doing this, it was really an unknown um, how hard it would be to, for instance, get a, get a visa for a talented kid. Like when the league started, it was sometimes easier than it is now, although I think the guys are having more success. So, you know, we've, we've definitely... Um, a focus on U.S. raised uh, U.S. talent. I um, I start out the year watching as many college games as I can. Like I can probably pretty well break down college teams everywhere. I um, the first year I did it, I called over 300 college coaches just just to try to get a feel and kind of like um, you know I I want to know what they know. I want to see who they have up and coming. Um, we, we do a lot during the year and we try to we try to host a lot of the teams here because there really is nothing like seeing someone live um one of the things i'm excited about is we're starting to really um break into the hbcu colleges so um we should have some guys from howard coming up and it's just it's just casting our net wider and wider we've got some u23 camps coming up um there's really no one answer to scouting or researching u.s college rugby i mean it's it's as you probably know it's kind of hard to find game tape sometimes it's hard to judge who's playing who and in all fairness sometimes like you know a coach has their favorite players but we we have to see them live because the um i've come to realize that the the step up is it's significant i mean it's um really excited that uh colin is getting a start today for old glory he was one of my favorite college players, and he's proven to be, um, you know, just as nice a guy as he is as good a player. Matt um, Matt Sherman was really helpful, kind of helping me uh, feel good about drafting him, and uh, obviously he, his play speaks for itself. The college scene today seems a little bit going back in history of uh, uh, football. You had <laughs> the NFC and the AFC, and you sort of have that in college rugby today. Do you foresee a merger down the road for the good of rugby? Um, rugby? I'm going to – so from an old glory standpoint, okay. we are excited about rugby being played, right? Um, I personally – and this is my personal – this is not a old glory statement or a political statement anyway. I just want to see more 15s rugby because what I have come to realize is, like, there's a lot more to 15s than people think there is. Um, playing outside center and playing wing in 15s is entirely different than similar positions in 7s. So I'm a little biased, and that's why we hold these games. Like, I have a whole series of games this spring. Um, in terms of one, like in terms of the different groups, seasonality is a big issue that's not easily solved. Um, I, I know I'm dancing around the question. I, I, I would say I'm going to... I, I would favor whatever is run correctly and in in you can in line. Pass on this. Yeah, I'm probably going to pass on it to be honest. I mean, uh, part of me part of me just loves that there's now more smaller schools playing rugby, and that they're receiving the support they need. Um, the other thing is too, I'm not I'm not entirely knowledgeable of you know um, the, the dynamics the the dynamics of it, what's going on behind the scenes. I will say. USA Rugby has always been really good to me. <laughs> They've, um, you know, I played USU 23s. Um, when I call people like Dan Payne or um, Paul Santinelli, they actually get us what we need. And um, in terms of where these two schools play in Rugby East, what surrounds me, if I was just allowed with Old Glory to recruit from Rugby East, I would, I would be able to run a MLR team with the talent coming out of there. So um, I, I guess we're just really lucky to be in a good spot and to be surrounded by two, two different associations trying to push it as far as they can. 
and again, in all fairness, you'll see Old Glory out at the CRCs uh, where we are sponsoring uh, CRCs. So we'll be out there supporting that as well. Uh, Tim, thank you very much for sure. spending time with me. And uh, good luck with developing Youngtown. In oh, man, I appreciate everything you're doing. Thank you so much. Take care.